It's intro time. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is uh, it's December seventeenth, two thousand twelve. We got a we got a hit. We got a, a, a suggestion from a listener that it might be good for us to just you know date stamp at the beginning. It's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. We don't know when this is being found. It could be found way in the future or in the past. How could they find it in the past? Yeah, exactly. If they'd found it in the past, then we would, wouldn't need to record it because it was already around. No, we would still need to record it because we're in the future and the past has been sent to the future to... Welcome to the Indoor Kids. Or the future has been sent to the past. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, um, do we have a sponsor? We do. And here's the thing. We know you guys like to, on your commutes, listen to podcasts. It's great. It's an awesome thing to do in your car, on the subway, what have you. It's not bad. It's not bad. There's no downside. And you know what really sucks also? Reading with your eyes. It's oh, like hard. God it's damn. Exhausting. I wish I could read with my ears. I just want to read with my ears. So now you can with audible.com. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Audible.com. Are you okay? Yes, I am. <laughs> what happened? Uh, so many things are happening. Uh, I'm actually reading. I have like four books. Well, we should tell them where to go. It's what? audiblepodcast.com slash indoor. Yes, as in indoor kids. And uh, and just get a book. I think you get a free book. I do believe you. I, we're not 100% no, sure. No, you that, get a free book. Okay. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash indoor. You get a free book. And um, just to like sign up, you get a free book. Yes. And let me tell you about a couple of books I've been reading. Uh, I, right now I'm reading Homicide, A Year on the Killing Street. Is that on Audible? Yes. Uh, all, all of these books are. Which I uh, is by David Simon, the guy who created The Wire. And there are so many stories that happen in The Wire that came from this 1991 book where he spent a year with the Baltimore Police Department. 1991. So that's an amazing book. It's like reading an, a, a season of The Wire, which is rad. Uh, that's one. I've also got... Well, you could have it, it read to you, too. Yeah, and not by David Simon, though. Uh, you could also read Brain on Fire, which is a story... I haven't started reading yet, but it's a book about this lady who just uh, succumbed to a like insane brain disease for a full month that made people think she was possessed. What? And so now it's like this whole book about how maybe a lot of possessions were actually this like form of encephalitis that this woman had. I'm guessing most possessions were not actual possessions. You think so? I think demons were not involved. Have you not seen a single horror movie? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're not <laughs> documentaries. That one's also on Audible. Uh, also on Audible is a book uh, I got that was recommended to me called Quiet, and it's about the power of being an introvert, uh, which Aww. I think is kind of interesting. Which I'm sure a lot of us are. A lot of us are, You're yeah. not. I actually, I consider myself a little bit of an introvert. I consider myself kind of a geek. <laughs> Uh, I actually do because I get exhausted. Uh, I don't get pa- I don't get power from being in social. Situations. I'm more introverted than you. I yeah, think. and which is also funny. I think people always think you're going to be like the lampshade on your head guy at parties, no, and you're not. You're I'm not pretty so much. quiet. Yeah, I'm pretty quiet until you start throwing things. At people. I wish you could somehow read. You can't do graphic novels in Audible. They'd be like, oh, the first, ba- like, he's kind of punching him, but <laughs> Batman is ducking. Maybe work on that, Audible. And then the one after that, Batman is now standing up and he has a bat around. And, and every time they're like... his left, no, his right hand. I wish I could just draw you a picture. I wish I could just draw you a picture. <laughs> I feel like it would cover a thousand words. Yeah, it would. Uh, so, Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash indoor. You get a free book. And, you know, this is how you can help us out a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. And help yourself out. Uh... Uh, quickly, we very and quickly. also if you're illiterate, if you can't read, Aww. this is a great way. Can I make a suggestion? Learn to read. It, uh, well, yeah, but yeah. you could also be like, oh, you don't think I read? Well, then how do I know? Brain on fire, That's and true. you could use it as evidence Maybe, that you can read. Here's my other suggestion: without having to learn how to read, you get it, get the book read to you while you're following along with the actual book. You learn to read that way. Mm, no. No? That's no, not no, work. no. Don't learn to read. Okay. Uh, quickly, we ate at the we ate at Denny's. Uh, we tweeted about it. The Hobbit menu. Mm-hmm. I Tasted the... a lot like Denny's. <laughs> Which was delicious. Both of us were, like, very excited. We yeah. haven't eaten at Denny's in a long time. It's also, you said the good thing is, like, it's people of all kinds are there. Like, young people, old people, hip people, unhip people. There were, Everybody's there. And especially in Hollywood, there were, uh, which we were, I'm not even going to say L.A., it was in Hollywood. Uh, the There are so many people there that think that they're celebrities trying to hide from paparazzi. And yeah. they're not. <laughs> nobody's. Nobody's. <laughs> they're just hiding from their hangovers. Uh, it was delicious. The Hobbit Hole breakfast, amazing. Yeah. I did feel really gross. Afterwards, leaving. yeah. Yeah. But the... Uh, the the little seed cake, fun, uh, Le- yeah, t- 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 lemon French toast was yeah. real good. Yeah, it was good. I, I recommend it. What yeah. are you gonna do? Not go? Not not go. Uh, one other thing, I've been playing a Steam game called Thomas Was Alone. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's like any game that has a, a quirky British narration. I'm in. 
basically I'm in. And it's like a puzzle game with like just different shapes that you have to move through levels. It's fucking great. Go get it. It's great. Thomas was alone. Thomas was alone. Uh, the other news, we'll just talk a little bit. Bioshock got delayed again. Again. March 26th. Mm-hmm. Is this ever going to come out? Yes. It is going to come out. And I feel like people are now more on board. I feel like everybody lost their faith in it. There a was a ago. little bit. There just was for a, a second. backlash. Yeah. yeah, there was a little bit. Um, the other thing is this was, you guys maybe read, to market Hitman. Square's marketing team made this Facebook app where you could put hits out on your friends and you could describe your friends with things like her small tits or his tiny penis. Well, and can and we say those are actually it. specifically Matthew Burnside's suggestions? <laughs> no, but those are, I'm sure, the most, most interesting Well, that's ones. what you have to describe your friends in no, the murder contract. No, but those are pull-downs. Oh, it was pull-downs? Yeah, it's That pull is downs. motherfucked These up. These are in the pull-downs. Yeah. Uh, that's a really bad idea. Yeah. It doesn't matter how close or far we are from a recent tragedy. It doesn't matter any of those things. Um, don't make an app. It was only on for a couple of hours. It, they already they made that it. weird nun commercial that everybody yeah. gets so angry about. And they're like, oh, I know how we can tampen this down. Yeah. <laughs> tampen this down? That's not a word. Tampen? It's tampen Florida. Okay. Yeah. You're tampening evidence? I, I'm tampering with all the evidence. Tampering. <laughs> I feel, why did you say it like that? Who are you, me? Yeah. Uh, I also found out I say birthday in a very foreign Pakistani way. We're gonna, we'll talk about yeah, that Yeah, we'll later. talk about that in a little bit. Um, uh, all right, well, well this the, episode... One other thing is we got a Wii U, and we have not played it yet. We'll try it soon. We're going to try it soon. We have no games. We have no games for it. We have to get games first. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. Uh, please enjoy this episode with Edmund and Daniel. Oh, I want to say this. Oh. They mention a website called E-Fucked, E-F-U-K-E. Have you gone to it yet? I went to it. It's just a hardcore porn site. So either they got confused or it's like a sub thing <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> It's like a category because it's just a porn site that I saw. So that's a fun little uh, heads up for this yep. conversation. Uh, we talked to Edmund and Danielle McMillan, and they were awesome. And I kind of love the shit out of them. So enjoy this episode. And uh, there will be no episode next week because it's Christmas and everybody has a week off at Nerdist Industries. And then we'll come back to you with the last episode of the year another week from there. Bye. Say goodbye, Camille. Bye. Now entering Nerdist.com. Hey, thanks so much for talking to us, guys. No problem. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Indoor Kids. Uh, we have with us uh, Edmund, Edmund and Danielle McMillan. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, Edmund McMillan, as you guys know, uh, has designed a number of games. He one of the stars of Indie Game the Movie, as well as Danielle. And uh, Danielle is his wife, as well as, uh, I think your Twitter profile says you're the number one president of the fan club. Would you, would you say you are? I am, yes, the president of the fan club. <laughs> and Edmund, you would say you're the overlord of Team Meat. I'm, I am the, co-overlord. I'm the vice president. Vice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't sound that exciting. The fan club. <laughs> 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 well, we basically wanted to have you guys on uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, we're big fans of your game, uh, games in general, big fans. We really, really love the movie. And we also really like, we're a married couple who plays games together and has a podcast about gaming together. Uh, and you guys are a married couple. How long have you been married? I think it's now? been, I think we hit seven years this year. Wow. Congratulations. I think that's about where we are, right? Well, I mean, we've been married. For, I mean, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so what is it so like, we'll, what is it like for you guys to kind of be married uh, and be working together? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just, I don't know. It feels the same as, as it always has been like. So we had our we had our actual thirteen year anniversary. Wow. This year, and we've always tried to spend as much time together as possible. So that's just kind of like this has slowly we worked towards this, which is our perfect arrangement. Now we're with each other uh, twenty four hours a day. So if we're not awake, we're asleep next to each other. <laughs> yeah. Over the course of the years, it's been like, how can we figure out, like, how can we modify our 
schedules to the point of being able to just be together because, you know, before, you know, Danielle's worked a lot of different jobs and I've worked a lot of different jobs, but around, around, well, I see, so I used to actually work outside of the house. So I actually had an <laughs> office with, um, with, with someone else where I'd go to work. Sounds terrible. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, then, and then all of most of my jobs, I worked with um, kids in like the school system. So I'd have to wake up really early and he would not have gone to bed early. I would try to stay up really late with him, get like a few hours of sleep, then go to work. And it didn't. Sounds terrible. We Yeah, we yeah. had a very similar arrangement when Kamal was doing stand up and I was working a day job that I would work all day, come home and then go to shows with him at night because that was the only chance I got to see him, basically. Yes, it's very, yeah, that's why I've, I've said before uh, um, that I was lucky that I was able, I started working from home, like, right around when Super Meat Boy started development. Mm -hmm. But that just pretty much saved us because I just, we wouldn't have seen each other otherwise. Absolutely. And I think it's really cool that you guys have, like, made sacrifices to spend more time together. I think that's, it, it's really rad and you, it's, it's rare that you get to see couples that work together and both love what they do and get to spend a lot of time together. Yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. Sometimes I wonder, like, why do, and I've asked that, why do we not get sick of each other? <laughs> I get sick of most people really quickly. I'm like, two hours in, I'm like, they've got to go. <laughs> and and now, um, you guys Tommy, have been 13 years. Thir yeah, 13 years. 13 years. Yeah, we've had a lot of practice, I guess. It's the 14th year that we're like, oh. No. Yeah, 14th yeah, then year. it's all collapsing. <laughs> we're going to run out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> Are you going to say something about Tommy? Oh, yeah. Tommy is the only other person I think that... You can tolerate? That I can tolerate. But even then, still Tommy. I'm mean, like... At, at the at the 30... Get, get 30, away from us. At the 30-day point, yeah. you, your tolerance for Tommy is at, at its end. Yeah, because that because when they're together, it's like... Uh, they're kind of <laughs> terrible when they're together. Why, why, why? This is perfect. <laughs> they will, like, listen... They will watch a bunch of really disgusting videos... And then reference that video for the next, like, 48 hours at just constantly. There was this, I don't know if you've seen this one where it's this guy on intervention. And, <laughs> oh, and, yeah. uh, Wait, no, no, no. What is this video? He, he does this crazy, if you look up, like, epic cry or something, he does this crazy loud cry. It sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> An explosion. That's and actually done, pretty good. They've done a bunch of stuff with stuff with it. They like the shoop de loop laser yeah. thing with it. But um they were doing that over and it was so like so loud it would scare me every time they would do it. <laughs> they thought it was amazing. <laughs> and you guys are just all there in the house. That's it. Kamal and I actually both pretty much work from home and we're always and we have like separate office areas, but we're pretty much Next to each other most of the day, I would say. Yeah. Except that yeah. we, we so G-chat each other. <laughs> so the old setup. So, okay, the, 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 the big, big picture. Perfect. Big picture story, though. So way back in 2003, when I started working on Gish, was the point where it was like, okay, I'm going to try to work on this game so and, and then possibly sell it, but I can't really be working another job while I do it. Mm -hmm. So the exchange was Danielle was going to actually support me through this. She was doing dog grooming at that point. So she would to work there, and I would basically work, and I think I was getting like a couple hundred, I was borrowing money from, from this company, uh, Chronic Logic, and working on that. So that happened, fast forward till 2008, Yeah. and that was the point where she was really tired of her job. She'd worked with, uh, like as a one-on-one -on -one aide with autistic kids for like three or four years. Wow, that, you've done yeah. a lot of stuff. That's very intense, Danielle. <laughs> and yeah and she and, and the thing is is she was really good at it but when you're really good at it you don't really get like easier like they don't give you the easy jobs they give you the harder jobs it's true you so have she, to dig in deeper yeah, yeah they, never i will say um as most people know that work with kids it was never the kids right. it's the harder kids have the much harder parents it's always the parents i was a therapist uh, for six okay. years and it was always the parents that i had a hard time dealing with it was. They're it, just. I mean, understandably, they're so nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it got it got pretty intense, and there was just a point where 2008 was a really good year for me, and I had enough money to kind of offer that back to her because she that was when she started the plush stuff. Mm -hmm. So she had her whole like line of, of plush toys, and she wanted to do shows and all this other stuff, but you couldn't really 
do that and then work all day. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you know, it was yeah, I was pretty burnt out. When I'll 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 just support you through this for the same amount of time or whatever. And then it turned out that she could actually make a living off of her own stuff at within the year. Like you were almost making as much as you were making. Well, yeah, and then I, I mean, as soon as I mm-hmm. I was selling Meat Boy plush before the game came out, so that was really awesome. That so is that amazing. Was, that was like the exchange, but when we started working together, like in 2009 ish, when we're actually in the same, like kind of basically how you see in the movie, mm-hmm. like she's on the couch and I'm facing the computer, like that was our living, our little environment or whatever. Yeah, and we got, we got so used to that. So when we bought we bought this house. So we have a three-bedroom house now, and it's upstairs downstairs, and Danielle has an office on the direct opposite side, on the upper floor of where my office is. And it is packed full of, it's just insane. It's it looks, like a dream for a, like, a crafter and <laughs> walls of fabric. And a little and, girl, because I just have toys and fabric everywhere. <laughs> she never, ever works in it. She's she's always sitting next to me in here. Up there. Oh, it's like you guys it, got out of prison, but you're still, like, pacing the same... <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that really gets it was uh, before I actually moved everything into this office, I was in the living room, which is right outside of that's office, with this giant table. Like, here's me messing up our nice house with, like, all my crap everywhere. And um, Tommy came over and he was like, what are you guys doing? You're <laughs> recreating the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, like, in the almost, I get it's like the identically same space. Like, yeah. the exact same space we were before, except now we're closer. Because she's sitting directly beside me, and my back isn't facing her. Aww, uh, that's awesome. Here, like, there's, it's really full Which, of stuff. it does get annoying when he's looking at disgusting things, and he wants me to look, but I'm busy. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you're busy, and you can't look at disgusting things. This happens. He found, what is, what was the thing that you found? Which what, one? It was the rule, rule 30... Uh, the rule 32, was it? Rule 32, where they 34. Put, rule 34, where they put... I don't put, know, that's uh, number. It's it's the rule that if if anything exists, there's porn, a porn version of it. Yeah, that's probably true. And he's yeah. like, look at this. I'm like, I, I don't want to see that. It was the part where we got the the Sarah Palin stuff. It was oh. just, oh but God. then but then it was like getting into. Then he saw uh, Katie. Well, how did you get from there? For there was a yeah. Tell us or? how you got there. Isaac stuff. Oh, for okay, from Isaac. That makes sense. And um. So, yeah, then he's like, the Katy Perry stuff, he's like, this is really good Photoshop. Yeah. It's amazing how good <laughs> people have gotten in Photoshop. Yeah, so, <laughs> like yes, dear, that's an amazing Photoshop of Katy Perry. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially the day-to-day. That sounds that's, that's that's pretty the, good. That's the day-to-day. So you're not dealing with autistic kids anymore, but there's still a lot of... Uh... There's still Ed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's still well, Ed and the screaming and the um, weird videos. Yesterday. I got, uh, I had just sat down with my tea. I was ready to sit down on the couch and relax. And he goes, you want to see these girls uh, quit porn? <laughs> and these I was girls like, quit uh, porn? Like, yes, I do. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take the time to watch girls quit porn. On wait, wait, oh, wait, what What porn is it? It's, um, it's a collection of girls just having a meltdown. Oh, my quit. God. Is that on YouTube? No, no, it's on. It, um, can I? This is so. This is like an adult show, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Please, yeah. We can say fucking okay. everything. Say all the fucks. I believe it's e fucked. E f u k t. <laughs> I'm gonna and be looking just, this up. There's hilarious compilations. Like, there's one where my favorite one, which I mean, it's so mean, but it's girls that are like auditioning for porn, and oh, they just no. look terrible. And the guy's like, "You know, you're a mess, right?" And they're like. <laughs> Yeah. That, that's like the thing. It's actually the guy who does it is like uh, somebody who was on Howard Stern. I think he's called Yucko the Clown. He's like an insult comic. And I'm pretty sure he does interviews with these girls. Oh. Also, he has them break down on camera? No, no they no, don't no. break down. Yeah, they that's know. That's a different compilation of. Uh, they know that they're going in to be ridiculed. Yeah, they um, know that they're going in for that. So yeah, I can't I can't really feel bad because I'm thinking they put themselves in this position. They know what they're doing. They're fine. You're really not breaking the uh or, the, the idea that I'm a massage. Oh yeah, as, <laughs> as a massage. Everyone yeah. already knows. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I've played cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't? Who hasn't? <laughs> actually, I actually really, really liked that game, and I started playing it because it was obviously so shocking. But then I just played it because I liked playing it, and I stopped seeing the penis and the STDs. It was just good guys and bad guys, you know? Yeah, I, th- I think that game is so beautiful. Like, the, I love the art. <laughs> it's, it's, some of my, it's some of my best line work. 
<laughs> no, it I, is that gorgeous. That game in six days with Florian, the same guy I made The Binding of Isaac with. I made yeah. it in six days, kind of as a joke, obviously. And, uh, yeah. That's what I think is interesting is that, and, and I've read interviews with you where you say that people, the idea that people that think that you're misogynist from that game is, is it, they, it's like you don't get it on so many levels that it's amazing. Like, to not get it to the extent that you think that you are a misogynist uh, for that game is, is, is very, very sad. What I thought was really cool watching the movie was, you know, to a lot of people, uh, you think about making games, people, people can think of it as a very technical enterprise, but watching you, uh, you know, talking about Meat Boy and then playing Binding of Isaac afterwards, it, it was really cool to see how much passion and personality can go into making a game, you know? Actually, I think it's hard, it's hard for you know, one or two people making a game to not put their personality in. Like, it's, I think that's the beauty of, of the independent scene where basically every game that comes out that's made by one or two people is going to be some kind of mirror of the person who's creating it. Like, you, you're going to see the personality of the people. That's one of the reasons why I like indie games so much is because it's almost like you get a, you get to peek into these people's lives and get a piece of who they are. It's always think, really pretty interesting. I think especially you, I feel like you really tap into a lot of stuff from your childhood and a lot of stuff from your own upbringing uh, in a way that I really have not seen in, in a lot of other, even independent games. I mean, there was one thing that was really interesting, the story you told about uh, you made that game where it's um, uh, you and uh, like a little girl, you're sort of going to different planets, and then you uh, found... Just a boy, but yeah. Oh, yeah, a little boy and a monster. Yeah, yeah. and then you found... Uh, drawings of yourself uh, when you were a little kid you drawn this stuff before right so it was yeah. like something that was like percolating in your brain for so many years you'd forget forgotten about it but it was these ideas that have been part of you for so long that you were then able to express in a way that other people could experience yeah it's cool too because Danielle actually gets to see like she's the only one who really sees the, the process of mm -hmm. like how it bubbles up kind of yeah I feel very privileged because I know that like there are a million little boys that would love to see the day-to-day -day stuff that I get to see. <laughs> well, like what? So what, are you, what kind of stuff do you see? Go to, go to bed. Tell me about it. Tell me about it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Just go to sleep. I've already gone under the covers with my Kindle, and then I have to keep moving the covers to hear what he's saying again. It's just <laughs> such, a, such a drag. <laughs> <laughs> a million and one ideas come on some of us have two ideas a day to get... <laughs> <laughs> and are you there do you kind of tell them or you're like no i don't think that's going to be i don't think that's going to work do you do you kind of bounce each ideas off each other like that no um well she actually helped a lot for me boy when, when things got really intense for me boy and i was writing a lot of like the cut scenes and stuff mm -hmm. i would always be like is this funny or am i tired like <laughs> Like, is this funny? And then she's like, there was a few times where she's like, no, that's not that funny. Like, this would be more funny. She was actually the one who suggested the the Chad. I don't know if you guys played through Meat Boy, but the Chad cut scene where he uh, he gets small and then like does little kissy faces at, at Meat Boy. Like that was essentially Daniel's. Oh, and, oh wow. <laughs> that you barely tap him and then he's completely broken. Yeah. <laughs> bad about it yeah my my ending was just weird it was just him like dying horribly and screaming and you just felt really bad and uncomfortable about the fact that he was dying but yeah it, sometimes i can try to pull ed back a little bit because i'll tell ed that's too disturbing yeah there's a few things like lately I'll, I'll be writing and be like okay she's she's the person who tells me where the line is and if i'm crossing the yeah line. because my line is pretty far over so sure for, yeah i well, feel like I mean, his line is on e fucked. You know, that's pretty <laughs> fun. Yeah, yeah. How, how far do I go? So she's usually the one who could be like, "Yeah, you should probably stop there." I but, uh, overall, me and Ed and Tommy, I feel really lucky that we all pretty much have the same sense of humor when it comes to that stuff. And that's so, and that's definitely oh. one of the things that I the sense of humor. It, it's it's clearly apparent. And before I've I've logged, I would say at least 100 hours on Binding of Isaac, at least. Uh, it's absolutely one of my hands-down favorite, favorite games. I talk about it on our podcast a lot. And there's one, when you get the x-ray specs, the little thing that comes up, uh, comes up, like, at the very bottom, the little thing that comes up is, uh, I've seen everything. Yeah. And I, I was like, I would love it. Wouldn't it be lovely if this was a reference to extras? Wouldn't it be amazing? It yep, that, it was. And it is. <laughs> and it is. 
that's the kind of thing that I, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Not only it's that, you know, you can, it's dark and it's, it's really, really interesting. It's really, really fun to play, but it's also, you can see bits of your personality in it. You can see bits of your personality all the way through it. And it, it's amazing. And that's what, yeah. yeah, for me, it's hard not to reference the things that inspire me. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, I learned, I learned really early on. Like when you're, when you're like a teenage artist or whatever like that teenage artist boy type that i was back in high school you you kind of fall into this like i don't want to say that i'm influenced by things because i'm so original i'm you so know, original kind of, just like everybody yeah, yeah. else you, you have you have that like aura about you like you want to be so unique like and i learned right after that that everybody is just a ball of of things that they were inspired by and i have i have i have no i don't feel like it's bad for me to like admit that like that i'm inspired by all these awesome things because i would prefer if people also got to be inspired by those awesome things yeah. so i reference lots of things i like yeah because there's it's a, just who i am yeah there's a really good one of my favorite books is this book called midnight's children of salman rushdie and he has a line in there where he says i contain multitudes which I think is such a great way of putting that exact thing that, you know, every person has like tons of things inside them and it's what makes you who you are. You know, you like Evil Dead or whatever it is and there's nothing wrong with sort of showing that influence. And as Emily was saying, playing your games, seeing your influences, it's a very unique uh, personal thing. It's all, yeah, and it's also fun and it also feels... Like I need to entertain myself while I'm while I'm working to stay motivated. And it's all this kind of stuff that you don't really see in those big. Uh, the only big game I can think of that seems to have sort of a point of view is the uh, Borderlands and Borderlands Two. Those guys seem to sort of a lot of references, yeah. S- throw in references that are clearly close to them, but otherwise everything seems so homogenized. You know, people. And don't what's funny? And what's funny about that? It's because of the writers. The writers are kind of independent. Like Anthony Birch was one of the main writers for all like the comedic stuff in there. Oh really? And you tell that it that you yeah, it's just like you have that independent vibe like with with a handful of people writing like a lot of the humor so it's going to be and you just have to get to that place where somebody will let you be <laughs> Let you have in that control, kind of control. Yeah. And then even if they don't get it, be like, no, just trust me. This is like if when this goes over, it's going to go over like gangbusters and it's going to be amazing. Uh, and, and it's just like <laughs> this collection of like it, it's just it's like it speaks to this shortcut of like of conversation. Like we don't even need to discuss the fact that we both know this is from extras. We just it just is. And we both know it. And it's and it's good. And that's it. It's 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 just really, really cool to see it in games. now danielle do you game um yeah i am kind of become more i think selective Mm -hmm. because i do have a very addictive personality so i know that whatever i get into i have a lot of stuff to do so i can't like 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 this week um well actually so danielle's Mm -hmm. on break at this point she's She's on holiday break because she went through the most grueling holiday rush uh, of the of, of her career. It wasn't even like a holiday rush. It was the past two months. Good it Lord. Was, it was awful. It was – how many was it in the end? So in the end, Danielle package, package made um, – not everything made, but package shipped, shipped and made how many items in the new store? The, the new store has sold 1,300-plus items. Oh, my Holy God. Shit. That was in a two-month period, and that had to all be shipped. So it was horrible. Like, there was, there was a few mild breakdowns. Was, yeah, every I was like, I'm just gonna refund all these people. I don't want to do this. I'm just gonna hide. <laughs> and how do how much help do you have with that? Um, she this is she's doing it all herself. Yeah, Are you kidding me? My mom tries to help me, but it's kind of like I don't. Which, I will let her help me fold boxes and stuff like that. Ed will help me fill out some um, forms. Right. Other than that, I feel like I know what I'm doing. I have it down to a science now. Just let me do it. Like, I've never been one that wants to train somebody at a job or something. Sure. I just, I'd rather just do it. Yeah. I think we're both similar in that way where we both, when we're comfortable doing something, we both prefer to just do it ourselves because we're going to do it the way we want to do it. Like, Absolutely. A lot of people will be like, okay, I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm barely allowed in the kitchen because. <laughs> Uh, she has things where she wants them and how she wants them. I'm not allowed to wash dishes because I'm not going to do it right. 
I'm not allowed to do this, this, and this because he's gonna use a sponge that's meant to she'll, count. because because either way she's gonna have to do it her again. Way. <laughs> yeah, there's so a there's, yeah. So that's please. what you do. You should not be good at it. That way you don't have to do it. <laughs> this is what Kamal has learned in our home. Yeah, I can't iron. He just goes, well, how does the water come on? And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, she, she, it was a huge, huge amount of work. But she's been filling her days with Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. Oh, which one are you playing? The new one? Yeah, yeah she's the playing one. the new one. What do you so think? That, um, I mean, I don't know. I think it's great. I love shooting people. <laughs> It's like, a good way to get frustrated. Are they all your customers that you're shooting? <laughs> when I shoot a guy and it's just like headshot or just, you know, something really good. And then I can hear him as they die. Sometimes you can hear their mic. Uh-huh. You hear them go, no. Or yesterday this guy was like, motherfucking fucker. So like, <laughs> and I was like, I killed you. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you're playing online. You're not even doing the campaign. You're like straight up oh, online. No, we, don't, we don't play single player or anything like that. Oh, she wow. just just play online. Yeah, just online. Do you but, guys I mean, play together? Complete garbage if you play anything really other than multiplayer. Yeah. Like and that's the only redeeming piece of it realistically. Like it's it's a it's a throwaway other of, than that. Of Call of Duty? Yeah. The zombie uh missions are not that bad. Oh, We've yeah, been playing zombies, through those. Yeah. yeah. We did. We played a little bit through Zombies' uh, last Call of Duty, but we haven't played it I'm at all. Definitely not one. playing the campaign, though. Yeah, no. Yeah, kamel has been playing a little of the campaign, and we've been playing the zombie stuff together. It's been pretty fun. Yeah, actually, you know, I never liked the Call of Duty campaigns. I just never did. This one's better than the other ones, but there's real no real reason to play. It's it. not taking itself as seriously as the last ones. Where like war is important, and we have to make yeah. sure. Like, no, shut up, guys. Yeah. Made it, it's don't sad, stop it's it. sad to think that like ninety percent of their budget goes to that. Yeah. The thing yeah. I think very little people actually play through. Yeah. It's just like, uh... I, yeah. I, are you guys playing I, anything else right now? Um, I was, you know, I was trying to think... I, I'm not playing anything else right now, but I was just trying to think in the... There's not enough cooperative games because there's times in the past where we've been playing a game and I feel like I get so much joy out of playing this game with him and I think this is what people feel like when they're like, the people that do crosswords together, they must feel the same <laughs> kind of joy. <laughs> yeah. Or puzzles. Yeah. Forever. No, this was this year was a lockdown because we were looking forward to Resident Evil 6, and I didn't even bother buying it because of the reviews were so, so terrible. Yeah, yeah, that game, that whole series has been heartbreaking for me because I loved the first Resident Evil, the second, third. And then, you know, even though I really liked 4, it was sort of the beginning and the end for that franchise, I think. Yeah, I mean, I thought 4 was... Fantastic! I yeah. actually thought four was the best was of that, the series. What was that the one that we? No, we played five. So five was like basically four, but with co-op, which, which was, was good because anything was fun, with co-op, yeah. anything with co-op is still fun. Yeah, yeah. I love. Like being, it's hard to ruin, ruin co-op. Yeah, getting to be a team and like that is so much fun. But then at the very end, when you go to fight uh, Wesker, something happened to our save, and oh, all save of our bug. weapons were gone. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. That happened to us on Borderlands. All our, our guys died. Ugh, it's just... Oh, we played through Diablo, but that was a huge letdown. Yeah. And Danielle actually, like... Danielle actually... So this is this is to show how bad of a job they did on that. Danielle was looking forward to this so much. For, so, more than anybody, anybody that I knew. So much! For years. For years. <laughs> and it was years like, and years. And we all play together, me, Tommy, and her, and we play to the end. And before we go to kill Diablo, Danielle gets up and walks away and says she doesn't care. Oh, oh no. That's damning. And that was it. So yeah. I just listened to them do it. Me and Tommy killed them in like a second. Yeah. Aw, that's a real bummer. Yeah, I can't even play like new Pokemon games now because the I can't do do stuff that's grinding i can't grind yeah. yeah i mean you know borderlands 2 i think there's y- it's a fun co-op for sure it's fun co-op and then the- through borderlands but danielle was starting in the beginning and she was kind of over it too well i was supposed to play but then i had so much stuff to do i just oh yeah couldn't. yeah that was around the beginning of of the whole hell time <laughs> we played a lot of uh horde mode on gears i i love playing that co-op with like four, four or five of our friends we that played we played the first gears of war yeah, all the way through and we really gears liked that and we played, uh, we played online versus for a while at that. We played, but then I had to not have a headset because I uh, somebody made me cry. Yeah, that was <gasps> awful. Oh my god, really? The Gears of 
64 people compared to Call of Duty people. Which is surprising. And it Halo is surprising. people are horrible. Yeah, I honestly, I never get on headset because to be a woman on headset is is just asking, we don't want to say asking for it, but it kind of, you end up getting yeah. so much abuse. Yeah, if people see that you have like your headset on, they see that little speaker going, those, Danielle, Danielle is a girl. Oh, well now my name isn't, my, before my name was Danielle Ram and now it's like Band-Aid Girl, I think. That's so funny. people, they, they don't go that crazy. Although somebody did ask me yesterday if I had a boyfriend. <laughs> Aw, that's great. Still got it. <laughs> Still bringing it with that profile. And I bet a lot of people, I'm sure they have no idea that it's you, because I'm sure a lot of the people have seen Indie Game, uh, the movie, and would freak out if they knew it was you. Yeah, I don't think that they... No. 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 Oh, is it okay that you said your name? Do you want us to bleep that? Your uh, game Oh, attack? no, I don't care. Cool. I don't think anyone wants to play Call of Duty with me. <laughs> You might be surprised. You might be surprised. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen now. If, if they're good, they can join my party because I, I do like to be on a winning team. Yeah. I haven't done, you know, I, for me, like doing those, uh, I do co-op. I like doing that. But online, like playing Slayer or what's the one in uh, Call of Duty called? What it's versus mode. I just, uh, there's a ton of them. There's a ton of modes. Yeah, I just, we, we play the, um, the tags one. Which, what is it called? Kill Confirmed. Kill Confirmed. Kill confirmed. Um, I get yeah. so, so obsessed with it. If it's just me, I it's it's bad. I had to like stop playing. Like Halo Three, I had a really really bad like a year. Yeah, I would leave the room and come back, and Camille would be just in his underwear sweating. <laughs> I'd be like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what is happening right now?" Well, I was really really good at the game, and but I had to keep playing to stay good. And I just got obsessed with it, and I was doing nothing else but playing Halo 3. To, and to be fair, this is when we had just moved to New York, and neither of us had jobs, and we oh, were yeah. miserable. Oh, yeah, and then, and then you know how you, Danielle, supported you. Emily supported me for a year in the same way, around the same Couple time, years. 2007, yeah, 2008. Halo. Halo Wars. Yeah, and I was just playing Halo while she was going to work. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, I, Every day. I actually can't play Call of Duty as much as Danielle can. Like, I... I hit a, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just like the game's design or whatever. Like I, I, I the way that they do a lot of the weapon stuff is seems a little flawed and weird, but I'm trying to play with different weapons and then of course when I do and I suck and then I get frustrated and I'm like, oh, all right, okay, I'm done. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna ask you to play anymore because I log you in for two games and then I have to sign out. <laughs> but, yeah, hopefully eventually like I'm But hoping... I did for the when, when we first got it and you were wanting to play as much as me, I knew this I thought to myself, this is not gonna last forever. Enjoy this beautiful time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping with the with the Wii U they do some more co op stuff thing is that like it seems like they want to do co op stuff. I don't know what Nintendo's doing anymore. Yeah, uh, nobody it doesn't does. seem like they're doing much. But I, like one of the one of like the greatest co-op experiences ever was when we played Four Swords on the GameCube with the with the Game Boy Advance hookup. Oh, like, oh wow! So nobody nobody played Four Swords on no. on, the, on the GameCube because in order to play it with four people, you needed four Game Boys. Oh, and wow! And then four specific like twenty dollar hookups to hook them up to the GameCube. To so you kind of had to be co-op. balling. You had to be balling a lot to yeah, be able to play it. Was, so we we both or work at GameStop and just take some stuff. Yeah, I worked at GameStop. Oh, did so, you? Uh, <laughs> so we actually did have the setup, and it was a great game. Like it's pretty, it's crazy to think that they actually invested so much time um, in a game that not many people played at all. But it's basically made for the for the uh, Wii U. Like it's oh. that's how it's kind of designed because all the experimentation they did with that handheld hooked up to the system thing is identical to what Wii U does. Oh, and all the games in Nintendo Land are based around this prototype that they made. Uh, for Pac-Man. Now, not many people even know that, but one person played as Pac-Man, and they could see the whole screen, and then three other people played as the ghosts who were trying to get Pac-Man, but you could only see portions of the screen, and it was pretty much the same as, as a combination of, like, three of the Nintendo Land games. That's amazing. And that's amazing. the prototype. That's, like, the prototype for Nintendo Land, and it was a really great game, but again, nobody played it because nobody had all the hookups. Oh, but, that's um, awesome. That sounds like it would have been a lot of fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. That was uh, one of the first games where I was figuring out puzzles before Ed, and it, I felt like my confidence soared. That it really helps. Sick. Puzzle games really, really, really help your confidence in gaming. <laughs> yeah. And in life, I think. You're and like, I'm life. smart. I did this. I can figure things out. I, I want to no, go back to something did. real quick. You said you worked at GameStop? Yeah. Yeah. How long did you work at GameStop? 
many years, on and off. I got fired <laughs> once, and then I came back. Um, I worked, let's see. Like, you actually got fired? Yeah, um, Nicole fired me because I didn't bring back my 3D card that I borrowed. Uh. <laughs> oh, you stole something? I mean, you borrowed. I, you borrowed I, something. I, I never literally stole anything. Uh, there's loopholes. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a <laughs> library. I worked at GameStop for at least five years on and off. Yeah. Wow. Um, all my friends like work there and I, it's, it's sad. It's, it's very sad to, to admit that I actually really liked working at GameStop because I liked being able to talk to people about video games. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that seems like it'd be the biggest advantage. This, the biggest disadvantage would be the kids that hang out in the store literally all day. Uh, yeah. I would imagine. We didn't, we didn't have a ton of those really. And, and for the most part, they were entertaining in their own way. But, um, but yeah, the thing that I would always do, um, which is if somebody had a bunch of trade, Mm-hmm. Um, I would, if I liked what they had, I would just, op- I would basically offer them what the store would offer, but I would give them the money and I would buy it from them. Oh, that's way better. That's an amazing deal. Yeah. So that's not so stealing. It's not, see, it's technically stealing from the store, I guess. Sure. <laughs> but, but, um, that's how one of the ways that we amassed. So at, back then we actually had an NES collection of like over 400 NES cartridges. Holy shit. <laughs> and which we had to sell. So heavy. It was, it was, it was a bitch to move. Like it went, it went from, I was like, oh my, I think we maxed out at like 440. 400. You then, guys had 440? Yeah, they're like over 600 though. We weren't, we weren't close to finishing, but. Ed is such, so good at collecting because he has a photographic memory of everything that we have. There's stuff that, that we have that I, I, I'll come across something and think, we surely we don't have this DVD. Yes, we do. <laughs> do you know where yeah. it is, or do you just know that it exists in your life? Uh, where? Well, if I put it there, yeah, I do remember. That's well, like with your muscle men? Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't... I can't ask him where just mm-hmm. random things are, like where are the scissors, because his memory goes back to six months ago <laughs> when he saw <laughs> When he saw the scissors. <laughs> it was but whenever the last time I saw the and scissors. And that is not yeah. helpful. No, that's yeah. not super Yeah, helpful. they're on the kitchen top six months ago. Yeah, it, I clearly have a, a mental picture of it being right there on the kitchen 1980. counter. 1980. <laughs> Since then, the house has burned down. Many things have happened. But Four. six months ago, they were there. 440 yeah. is huge. Did you guys see there's a guy selling every single Super Nintendo game uh, right now? It's on eBay. But- I used to look at, so I had a, we have a rule, or even now it's still in place with magic cards and stuff like that that I collect, where I don't pay, okay, like I had a ritual, and this started, this started long, long ago when I met Danielle, really, that was one of the things that we started when we started dating. We'd go to the flea market, and that was back when NES cartridges were between, you know, three and five bucks, mm-hmm. you, could, you could buy them at, at, the, at the flea market or whatever, and my rule was I would never pay more than five dollars for a cartridge, ever, because... At the halfway point of our collection, I could have very easily finished the collection on on eBay and just paid the money and bought it. But we didn't have a lot of money then. And the, the part of the ritual was going and haggling with these different people who probably hated my guts at the flea market because every time I was trying to get a better deal than the last. But <laughs> that's how we amassed the collection was just every Saturday going to the flea market, finding new t- cartridges that we didn't have. Or when Funko Land went out of business and they oh, had to get Oh, Funko Land. Funko yeah. Land, yeah. Yeah. We got a lot from that as well, and that was, like, super cheap. But we had a ton, and then, like like we mentioned, like, when we started moving, like, I, I actually worked Animal Control once um, before Gish. And How I, old are you guys? I, you Hundreds guys, of years, I feel like, like. You have so many jobs. Ed is 32, and I'm 28, <laughs> and we met when he was 19. And I had just turned 15. Holy, wow. So we've had a long... So you guys held hands for three years? <laughs> or how long? Is it one year? I don't know what the age limit is. Certainly nothing illegal happening there. <laughs> held, held genitals. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know, we've been together for a very long time. And yeah, we've, we've, our, life, our lives have changed over the years. But yeah, I was an animal control officer for a year. And <laughs> when I lost my job... I got fired from that job as well. Why? Uh, it was a long, horrible story that has nothing to do with me doing anything bad. Sure, it has to do with sure. the people who hated my guts, who were paranoid about losing their jobs. Well, so. don't say people. They were women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that where the game Cunt came from? <laughs> Goddamn women. They were women. <laughs> no, they were pretty wicked people, and uh, they were scared of losing their jobs because they didn't have the adequate education or training. So mm-hmm. instead of, like 
trying to get that, they decided to try to get everybody else fired, and they succeeded in firing five people, and I was one of the last. Um, I did actually quit um, before they could fire me, but then they begged me to come back because they were shorthanded, and then they fired me when they found somebody else <laughs> to replace me. Oh, wow. But it, it was a horrible experience. And it was a cool job. We... We had moved up at that point because the job was good. I really liked the job and it paid well. So I, we moved up. We it was when we moved out of our room that that we rented, and you know it was like almost a like college dorm situation. So we lived with shitloads of people. We moved out of there, got our own apartment, and then I lost my job a year later, and we had to move out. And when we moved out, we had all these mass this huge collection of NES cartridges, and it was like we can't even fucking move this back into because we had to move back into the room. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> We had to get rid of it, so it went down. And to we maybe... were moving back with the cat. Yeah, and a ferret. But well, we had Daisy in the room, didn't we? <laughs> no, not before, but after. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we moved back, and I had to get rid of most of the collection, and we, we pruned it down to like 150 of the essentials. Really, they're not that many good NES games. But um, and then once Meat Boy hit, and we had no money, it was one of the many collections that I completely sold in order to make money. Yeah, uh, I mean that's what it's there wait, for. So then, how did you build it back up? I know it's gone. Yeah. Oh, it's just oh, totally gone now. Sometimes he looks at the cartridges listfully at the flea market, but he doesn't. There, the prices have gone up now. The prices have gone up. Yeah, because now never, it's super hip to collect. I, he yeah. would never uh, pay that for them. No, I, I'm not going to. I mean, I have, of course, all these games on emulators. Oh, so it's not thinking of that apartment. That was our first apartment that we moved into. This was the time where Animal Crossing was coming out. Oh, yeah. And some website was doing this, like, daily diary. It was IGN. Oh, IGN. Going through town and writing about what they did during the day. And it was, like, the most magical thing <laughs> that I had ever heard. And I couldn't grasp, like, how they're, how this is a game. He says he gets up and he goes and he fishes. He stops by the dump. There was a shirt there. Yeah. <laughs> he leaves some stationery. And, oh, my God, I was so excited. And then something happened where the Blockbuster buyer house got it, like, a week early. Yeah. So, we were, like, I, think, I feel like we found out from our neighbor. We we rented it for the whole week yeah. until, oh, that was. <laughs> that was good. And then we, the best but then, we, but then we, we ruined it because we, it, GameStop got in the booklet that showed every possibility. Yeah. Oh, no. And, looking through it and once we saw the limitations it was like ah oh, it yeah. just destroyed yeah. once you stare at the sun you can't see anything else the same way again the same thing happened with world of warcraft where me and her actually had a really we had a really really good time playing because we played we didn't know anything and we played it as an adventure like an unknown adventure like let's go oh we can't go in here because we'll get killed or you know what 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 kind of spells do we get when we level up like we didn't know like the ultimate things that everybody you know ends up doing like, right, you best right. Know, this weapon at level 39 or you're obsolete and this guy has a certain percent chance of dropping it and... yeah once once we found out the probabilities of things like it was quite literally like i hit a certain level and a friend of mine's like well you need this item because it's you all every other item is worthless and there's a five percent chance of this boss dropping it so let's kill it 20 times until it drops, it's like, okay, it's not funny. Well, you sucked well, all the fun out of it. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. You <laughs> see, like, the whole thing of video games is, like, now the world seems so big, but then when you become aware of the limitations and the video gameness of it becomes obvious, you know, like the other Call of Duty uh, campaigns I've played, it's very obvious, like, if I pass this card, the enemies show up. If I stay back here, they don't show up. When those rules become really obvious, that's when, you know, games stop being fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's good about sort of these uh, throwback True. games, like these uh, indie games, is that it's, it's going back to a different sort of aesthetic where all that stuff didn't matter. Yeah, I mean, that's my, my goal with, with most game design is to try to create or at least simulate the magic of the unknown. Yeah. Like, yeah. Finding of Isaac, a lot of people do just go and look up Wiki, <laughs> go on the Wiki and look up all the items and see what they do, but I created the game in the hopes that when you played it, at least for the first couple times, that you went in completely blind mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. the magic. Like, that's the magic of, of The Binding of Isaac. Yeah, because Emily he, doesn't look anything I up. I still refuse to look anything up. Uh, in yeah. any of the trinkets, I won't look anything up. I have to figure out what it does on my own, and then I have to figure out if I want to use it again or not. But it's amazing that I, I've played that game as much as I have, and I still see stuff I've never seen before. Still. like okay, the and That's my goal for the, for the remake, like... 
uh, the remake will have a whole other like huge expansion as well as a bunch of extras and modifications to the game <laughs> that will make it so anybody who's played the game for 100 200 hours can g- jump back in and feel like it's a whole new mysterious experience all over again <sighs> That's amazing. Now, uh, I, I know you've talked about this before, but uh, did that game get you in any sort of trouble with um, religious people? No. Uh, Danielle was worried about that. Yeah, that was the one thing I, I was worried about. I didn't want somebody to, like, come to our house. and. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's the, the, the people you never want to upset are the crazy religious people, like... It's 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 just not a good move. But I know he's not in like abortion doctor territory, but I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> when your next game, abortion doctor comes out, you might be. <laughs> so cute. But I, I had I had a, early on, like even like like even though Tommy didn't develop the game with me, he was here through the whole process, and him and me would talk about it too. Like, will anybody react in a really negative way? Like, will will this get negative press? And my assumption was that it won't because the type of people that would do that do not play video games. There's no crossover. Yeah. They won't even know. They won't even know the game ever exists. That's the thing. And it's the thing it's I, kind of it's like... Part that, that was exactly what happened. There was no, no controversy at all. The only controversy that happened was um, we released in Germany and their ESRB over there gave, gave it an elevated rating, um, which was like a mature rating due to blasphemy which was the first time that they had ever done that. And the controversy was, was actually centered around um, a bunch of people in Germany saying that you can't do that because you can't define what blasphemy is. Oh, interesting. So, that was pretty amazing. That was, that was a lot of press. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. like one of Ed's dream come true. Is like, just like when uh, PETA did their Tofu Boy. That was oh, yeah. Dream yeah, the thing. Tofu Boy thing was kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you, you always kind of wish for that. Like, they I wish... spent like, as much money... That they spent making that game and doing that whole campaign was the. It was three times the, three times the budget of Super Meat. Yeah. Well, that's Peta. <laughs> that's Peta for you. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. Why not just throw a bunch of money at something? Why not? <laughs> yeah, what else are they going to do with it? They yeah. Got- donating i will say i've I've played uh binding of isaac on a plane uh and i've gotten that's the only time that it's registered to me that i was like oh this might upset other people uh because but most people won't even realize yeah like like i think a lot of people that play the game don't even so a lot of people don't even think about it and they just take it as it's a video game and so it's it's weird and you know you just do what you got to do and which is fine. Yeah. I think I got a maybe mom's bra. I think it was maybe the mom's bra animation that came up that the woman next to me made a tisk noise. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always, I always take, I always, whenever I finish the game or whatever, I always show my mom or have her play just to hear her say, oh, Edman, when are you going to make something pretty? Can you make a game about the ocean? <laughs> that would be about nice. Birds and the waves and... <laughs> Did you one, day, mo- one day I really want to do that as like a game jam. I want to do my mom. My mom makes the game. Like my mom designs the game, and I sit with her and record her with a, a bunch of game design ideas, and then make make a little prototype of a, you know three or four day game that's all based around my mom's ideas. And that would be, be great. Amazing. It would I just think it would be, be pretty fun. It would just be like you calling her every day <laughs> and visiting her a lot, and maybe a nice <laughs> florist that she could stop by on the way home. That's what mom's like. <laughs> it would be like something about it's, it's my mom's obsessed with the beach my mom's obsessed with well birds. she's obsessed with birds now because she like she's obsessed with photography and that's about it those things that not, your... not sports for some reason yeah, because she, she dated a dude that was into sports so now she was like into football your mom no. sounds way more interesting than my mom she's into football baseball or, football she's more into to baseball she was into football to be against whatever that guy liked oh, oh because he liked the raiders right oh no. that's not a sign of a great relationship <laughs> he wasn't good <laughs> there's a relationship anymore going on well, that might be a good mother's day present though just make a game for your mom like tailored around her that would be adorable yeah, and i'll give it to her and she'll say you know what would have been nice? A, 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 a vacation. <laughs> I know I know somebody whose son bought her a cruise. That would be nice. Now, and you mentioned something. You said the term game jam, which I've, I've read that that's also how Binding of Isaac came about. 
Can you tell me what exactly? That's how eugenics came about. Really? No, yeah. and I want to talk about that too. I'm kind of uh, we're kind of fascinated with that. But the what? We don't talk is... much about that. Okay, we won't. We uh, my main thing is: Are you guys both obsessed with cats? Is this a thing? Um, Danielle's more obsessed than I am, but I love cats, and Tommy really loves cats too. We all grew up with cats. Yeah. How yeah, many cats do you do. have? We, uh, us do. We we're all cat people. Yeah. I got a pee. Oh, we um we have four cats now. Because that was part of the thing. I actually uh, I follow you on Twitter, Danielle. Is it cat mother cat? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a lot of pictures of really really cute cats, basically. Aww. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, um, I love them. Yeah. Oh, well, now that Edmund's gone, you can tell us eugenic secrets. <laughs> oh, I wish I could. I'm very. It's like. It's like my dream come true. Like we get these, we're getting songs like, like pretty much weekly mm-hmm. for um, the game, and it's just like, can this never end? Can we please always get these cat songs? Is there any any basic uh, idea of when mugenics might be an actual thing? I don't know. I w- I always like to add six months to whatever Ed says, <laughs> just to because be on the safe side. Game developers have a very odd concept of time. Very uh, optimistic, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, even though they've been through this so many times. We're like, no, surely we can do this. We well, figured this out. But it's hard because in a previous life I was a computer programmer because you think like, all right, this is when this will be done. But you taking into account the bugging, the debugging, how to like yeah. fix all that. It's so unpredictable. There's no way to know. Yeah, that makes sense. What did I miss? Um, uh, she, she told, told us, us everything, everything about mugenics. <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you, I, I was, I was wondering, I'm like, yeah, Danielle's going to spill the beans on everything. <laughs> uh-huh. I, they asked about when the game might be ready and I said, oh, yeah. add six months to whatever you say. That's not true. <laughs> so when is it going to be ready? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> plus six months. I don't know. Plus six months. Like we have, we have, we have a few games that we want to have finished this year mm-hmm. um, by the end of this year. So the sooner the better, but like, yeah, this is one of those projects that's like, started out kind of as a joke because it was a game jam thing. And then it was like, oh, wait, this is actually really cool. And then it's, oh, my God, this is really cool. And then I think the moment when we hired Matthias to do the whole soundtrack and it's like 20 plus tracks and like half of them have like crazy lyrics and they're just amazing. Like we're listening to the songs in the car. That's like, yeah. they are. Holy shit. It's going to be one of the best soundtracks for a game ever, like guaranteed. I, I'm in love with it. And it's just it's become this. A just amazing project. But anything that they ever work on together, Ed and Tommy, it's it can never be a little game jam game because they both have such great ideas, and then it just balloons into they like their ideas bounce off each other, and it balloons into this giant thing. That's so cool. So game jam is basically just sitting around and like just having fun with like ideas, essentially. Yeah, yeah. For 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 Mugenics, it was the first um, day was just a lot of talking mostly. Huh. Yeah, it was, there was a it was called Ludum Dare, and it was this little game jam where they usually give you like uh, a a topic to make a game around, and it was evolution was actually the, the the theme for that one. But there was a sub theme which was voted out. I think it was like a ninety ninth place called a thousand cats, and we saw that the whole time thinking like. A thousand cats. That sounds great. How awesome would that be? A thousand cats. And uh, it was around the time I think we were just kind of in awe of how, I think Daniel probably said that we have four cats, and mm-hmm. how, how different the cats' personalities are, like vastly different, and how how cool it might be to like make something based around that. And uh, then Tommy you know, started going into the eugenics aspect of, Yeah, like, Tommy's like, I'm amazing, I can do this. <laughs> and then kind of it kind of went from there. So it, like, became this giant thing that where the basis was evolution and a thousand cats, and we 1, just took it. One thousand cats! One cats. thousand cats! That's so much cats. cute! Yeah, it's going to be a lot of good uh, cats. Is that, there's a Neil Gaiman story in the Sandman series called Dream of a Thousand Cats. I wonder if there was a reference to that. Nerd. I, had, I actually haven't. I was just talking to um, uh, Troy, this local comic shop owner, about Sandman, and I've I've never read any of the Sandman comics because I I always hated the art. Um, you know, the art is tough because there's no, and the artists keep changing. Yeah. But it's you, it's a good my, story. It's my favorite comic book thing of all time. Is those like ten years of Sandman? It's like an amazing sustained piece of writing. It's beautiful. 
And, you know, some of the art is good. It's just inconsistent because the artist keeps changing. But I would say definitely, definitely give it a shot. I always judge comic books uh, by how many dudes uh, tell me that I absolutely have to read it. And pretty much every <laughs> guy. That and uh, Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah. Lord. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Max. And oh, Sam yeah. Favorite writer slash artist. And uh, I actually got to meet him. And I have um, an original painting of his on my wall that um, includes the Max, Mr. Gone, and Meat Boy in it. Holy the- shit, Whoa. that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. It's the coolest thing I've ever received. Yeah, like, that's quite a present. You know, like, it was really, it's hard to even describe, like, opening up the package, I felt lightheaded, and I felt like, I felt like when I, when I pulled back, like, what it was, it, it was, it was like a, uh, wrapped in like kind of like a cardboard like folded thing and when I pulled it back it was like I had looked into a portal like and I was looking into the hands of my like 14 15 year old self like looking at a Max comic and it made me feel really weird like like <laughs> like somehow there was a tear in time and, and I was I don't know it was very very odd no it's awesome I mean you you're, you're... Living your dream, your fourteen you know, year old dream. What, what, what was so awesome? The one part that, like, I kind of teared up watching indie game movies, like seeing pictures of you and Tommy as little kids playing video games, and to now be sort of doing that, making the very thing that brought you so much joy. It's it's such an inspiring story to be able to do both. You guys get to do what you really love doing, you and know? not compromising. Yeah, and it's something. Yeah, it's something that I don't think either of us thought was possible. Like, yeah. growing up, I never in a million years would I have thought, even though as a kid, I used to design D&D campaigns by myself that no one would play because I didn't have friends that would ever, oh. like, sit there. Oh, no, that is the single saddest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. That's, <laughs> but it was really fun. That's like, sadder than E-Fucked. Yeah, it might be sadder than E-Fucked. <laughs> it was, it, I, I had a good time. But that's like, <laughs> I, would stay up, I would stay up, like, designing D&D campaigns and, like, and, and kind of designing, like, levels for games. I remember, like, trying to do, like, Zelda levels and stuff like that when I was little. But never, I never, as a kid, thought that it was a possibility because in my head, I strongly believed that in that this these games were made by hundreds of people. And if I were to work on these, no one would ever take me seriously and I would have no control. And yeah. I believed that through high school. Like, you know, when you sit down with the, the job counselor, whatever the hell they call it, guidance counselor... Yeah, mm-hmm. they're like, "What do you what What do you want to do?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know. Maybe animation." But I I hated animation, and I still kind of don't like animation. Like, it's just not it doesn't bring me that much joy. He always like uh, procrastinates like crazy, and then and then once he gets into it, he does it, and then it's amazing. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's hard to like. It's really hard to switch gears from like illustration or design work especially level design work, and then go to animation. It's just a different or part of my have, if, Or if you're brainstorming about two different games, you get on, you're excited about one, and then yeah. you jump back on the other one. It's a, it's a weird thing, but yeah, <laughs> even in high school, like, I remember the guidance counselor saying, like, would you ever want to work in video games? And I said, well, no, because I felt like it would be just frustrating. It would be a tease, if anything. Like, what would I be, the guy that, like, designed the shoes of some character? Right, you'd be part of some big machine. You, you made Kung Lao's hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's actually that's, would be pretty high up on the totem pole, I would think. Yeah, that's I feel like that's basically where I'd be, and I and I thought, well, at the most, maybe I could be a character designer, but I could never, I just couldn't do it. Like I could never bring myself to do it, and I was very scared of doing art for a living because I was afraid that I would lose that outlet. Because I did comics when I was younger, and and then I moved on to doing websites and then interactive stuff like in Flash. Then that turned into games, and then into games. And uh, and that is true that if you do the thing you're passionate about, the, the fear yeah. is that you won't enjoy it anymore. Yeah, it, it was just, it was a big time fear. Like, Which I thought you, it was you right. Won't, you probably won't enjoy it anymore unless you're doing it on your own terms. On terms, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, excuse me, I couldn't imagine going and, like, working at, like, a pop cap or a Zenger or whatever and drawing, like, tons and tons of furniture for some game or whatever. And animating this stuff, and then going home and feeling like I want to work on anything. He would be a terrible person to live with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you so can't was, go back. If that were my reality. Like, my, I, I think I learned at an early age that my mental health is number one, and in order to be self-sustainable, like I need to be happy number one. Like, and, and the money's not going to make me happy, and even. 
and even like the comfort of of security didn't make me happy mm-hmm. like it, it, i needed to i needed to just do what made me happy and i needed to do that at all costs like that that had to be my number one or i was just going to be a terrible husband and a terrible person and just hate my life. I think that's and a big part of it. The the fact that you put your mental health, like you put your wellness at the top of the list is why you guys have such a good relationship. I'm sure partially, I'm sure it's like you, you have to put that stuff before getting paid and put that stuff before how cool your job is. You've got to take care of yourself before everything else. It's, it's, it's definitely weird looking back too, because we were really poor. Yeah. Like, Really but poor. It never fe- it but it feel never like felt never like, poor. yeah, it never felt like a negative. Like when we were the poorest and we were living in a tiny room in uh, in this Vic- old Victorian home full of uh, like what, fifteen people. I think the most was uh, maybe eleven to thirteen. Eleven to thirteen, two bathrooms. Yeah. Um, and we had one cat in the room. We had Guppy. Um, Guppy, and, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and. Those times, even though those were like the hardest times, like I remember uh, scrounging money around so we could go and buy um, we, what we would splurge on. We would go and we'd get top ramen, and then Danielle would get eggs, and we'd put the eggs in the top ramen and mix it up. If you grew up as a poor person, <laughs> you know that you add egg to the top ramen because then it's like well, it's a whole meal. It's got protein in it then. But also, that's like... also use chopsticks. More fun. Yeah. More fun. Oh yeah. Chopsticks but are yeah, cheap. That, that's yeah. Like, yeah, like those memories of of that that hardship or that perceived hardship never felt hard. It just always felt fun. It yeah, just we felt were like, having a blast. In a lot of ways, it's it's innovation. It's working around the limitations that you have, and sometimes it's fun to have those limitations because then you are forced to be a little more creative with your lifestyle. I think, like, that's, and, I think that's really true because I think people will often try to just harp on how negative everything is and how bad this is and how horrible the situation is when it's like, no, if you just kind of settled into it a little bit, it might actually be enjoyable for you and you're going to look back on this fondly, but not if you're t- constantly looking for how it's ruining your life. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that approach is similar to you know the way you make games. It's Making games is sort of taking limitations and being creative within these limitations. You know, I mean, you guys have, I don't know how many people, two, three people make a game. I, I know Meat Boy was just two, right? So yeah. you, it's uh, resources are very very limited, but you guys can do whatever you want. So it's sort of like working within these limitations, but doing something creative, and that's what, you know, that seems to be the philosophy you guys have for your whole life. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's yeah. I mean, and things have changed so much, and adapting to our new, like like we said, or we addressed in the beginning, like adapting to our new environment. It was like, oh, everything's changed. I wonder how how our lives are going to change and what's going to change. And for the most part, nothing's changed. That's awesome. Like we all, all we do have now is security, which is nice. And we do have the ability to fund, you know, more risky or crazy projects that we want to do. Where, well, basically my mom has a, her job is through us now. Yeah. Oh, really? We're, we're able to extend <clears throat> our security. Yeah. The kids, we, we bought the kids. Uh, we have a uh, two, nephews and a niece and so we we're able to buy their back to school clothes and things like that yeah and, and danielle's like she was saying like danielle's mom uh she worked in a factory for for a while and uh she would always say that she because she used to do like um what are the figures called like the the ceramic the ceramic like mm-hmm. ceramic figures and stuff yeah and she, she was doing that, like, swap meets. yeah she was doing art from since i was little but she was usually she was so busy doing her own thing that there wasn't really time to, like, teach me how to do anything because she'd be working, like, a graveyard shift and then coming home and making stuff, take me to school. Then on the weekend, we'd go to craft fairs, and then it turned into the flea market. Yeah, when I met Danielle, her mom was doing a lot of airbrush shirts at the flea market and Ooh, yeah. stuff like that. So she had, like, Like all Tupac and stuff creative. like that? What was that? Like Tupac and stuff like that? No, 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 like um, her own more design hippie, of like more like stuff. butterflies. Oh, and, I see. Like okay. Because she, 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 oh god, she's so she's good at whatever she does. So she'd make these like beautiful butterflies that had like layers, the stems, layers of the stencil would come off, so they'd be multicolored and everything. Um, but you know, stuff that actually would have been appreciated at a craft fair, but we were too poor to 
get into a craft fair. Yes. yes. You're at the flea market where people are like... Wants to haggle. Yeah, people are like, $10 for this handmade thing. Will you take $1? Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh, flea markets. I grew up in flea right. markets, too. Sorry. Which, I mean, you're, you're asking for it when you're there, but <laughs> it's horrible. But, yeah, so she... She would always say, like, I, I don't remember when it actually happened first, but she said, you know, I can make, I think we were talking about making figures for, for Isaac. And mm-hmm. she was like, you know, I can make figures. I know how to make molds. And I'm like, all right, well, see if you can make one. And she's like, I'll do that. And then she went home and figured out how to do it and then came back with this, like, little Isaac figurine that she could replicate, you know, indefinitely. And so I wait, was like, wow, this is this is actually pretty good. Like, I think we can probably sell this for, you know, a few bucks in the shop. Yeah. And then those sold out. And then it was like, oh, OK, well, can you make more of these? And she's like, yeah, I can make I'll make Meat Boys. Yeah. So she went and made made a Meat Boy. And then it was like, OK, make it, you know, a Band-Aid girl. OK, you made that. So, OK. And then she was like, I think I can make Dr. Fetus. I'm like, how the hell are you going to make Dr. Fetus? Like, it's like a really complicated, like clear like with the figure inside with the hat on top and she's like oh i can do it so she comes back to this really complicated figure and then over the course of the year like she's just gotten exceedingly better like yeah like the really, first really isaac figure was very bumpy and she 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 just you know you learn more each time you do it so then she realized before she pours the molds she has to sand the original off first so that they'll be smooth and now yeah. if you look at the isaac figures that we have now compared to that first one it's like it looks like a company. Yeah, I, I assume that it was. I had no idea that it was your mom. That's it is amazing. Just, so she quit her job, and she's been, and, and she got a place over in Santa Cruz, oh, and shoot. she's able to pay for everything by just the figures. We just give her a hundred percent of of everything, yeah. um, of all the figures that she makes, and she makes her living that way. That's now. why she's always bugging me to help me with the shipping, and I just say, Oh, I see, I see. You wow. could help me by leaving me alone. <laughs> Uh, well, that's awesome, guys. Thanks so much for talking. It was really interesting talking to you guys. You know, people are always asking us, like, how do we get into video games? How do we make Couples. video games? Couples. Oh, oh, you mean, like, making video games. Yeah, yeah making yeah. video games. And it's like, well, you just have to do it. Do it. Do what you like doing. And, Find you know. Find a way to make it work. And do it for the right reasons and pour yourself into it. And hopefully you'll get success and be, you know, live in a three-bedroom house. <laughs> you know, a good a good rule of thumb. And even that, I mean, we could we could still be living in that apartment and we would still be fine. Yeah. But but like a good rule of thumb for anything is if if you really love something and you want you want that to be your career, you got to be realistic enough to know that you're going to have to spend at least 10 years working on that to become a really good at that. Mm-hmm. And then once you become really good at that, you know, the money will eventually follow you there. Like it will, it will, it will open up and you will find some way to market yourself um, and your skills or yeah. at least be utilized by somebody else at some point. And I feel but like- it takes, it just takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of sacrifice to get there. And that 10 <clears throat> years is a good rule of thumb. Like when I hit like the eight and nine year point was when Meat boy was kind of starting that's and that's nice. what carried me through. Like, it was all that experience before, not only with making games, but re- learning how to live on no money. No money you know? and failure oh, and absolutely. Yeah, learning, yeah. How to, yeah, learning how to de- Oh, hello? Hello? Did we lose him? Oh, no. Hello? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, that was sorry. Okay. You're back. Sorry. sorry. Uh, yes, learning how to live with failure and no money, you were saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah. very important uh well thanks so much guys for talking do you guys want to plug stuff what are your twitters and stuff uh, websites um my twitter is danielle orama yes my, <laughs> my mine's edmund m no, no edmund, edmund mcmillan and with there's two, two ends. ends two ends at the end it's because i got hacked a while ago and then uh i gave up on twitter and then, like, six months later, Twitter actually gave me my Twitter back, but somebody had already taken my name, so... Oh, how yeah. lame. I had to put another pen at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet you have more followers than the other guy. The guy who hacked me? Yeah. No, the other guy who has your... The, the older... Oh, yeah, my original name? Yeah, I think he has 16 or 17. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. Jerk. Uh, I, I probably should take the, t- the time and just email Twitter and be like, hey, can you get this guy off of my name, but... They're not very helpful. I can't... No. I can't even... <clears throat> Yeah, I, I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. Go ahead. No, it's fine. <laughs> 
And uh, what's your website where we can buy all this stuff that uh, uh, Danielle makes? And Danielle. It's closed right now. Yeah, it's closed right now, but it'll open again on January 5th. It's Ed plus, spelled out plus, danielle.bigcartel.com. Or you can just go to like... You can Google Ed, Ed store. Yeah, if you go to edmanm.com, mm -hmm. the store's linked on the side. And we'll have a link to it as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for talking to us. It's, weird. Uh, it's just nice to talk to other couples who kind of work together and uh, work in gaming and enjoy what they do. It's, it's nice. Well, thank you so much for having us. It was really nice to be included, I'm finding. After, <laughs> after years of being together, first with like Indie Game the Movie and then more with things like this, it's like I've been in the background the whole time and now I get to talk. Yay. I know. <laughs> Trust me. I'm the wife of a comedian. Trust me. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that was mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you guys are ever in LA, feel free to come and, and, and hang out. We are, we are trying to go places that are not our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys should visit LA. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. We'll have a good time. I know. I want to see Britney Spears. <laughs> I want to see her in a coffee shop. Okay, we don't. <laughs> we haven't figured that out we, quite yet. You don't just see Britney Spears, but we have seen Jake Gyllenhaal. A bunch. We see him a bunch. We've seen Madonna. I've seen Rob Zombie in this store. Rob Zombie, Keanu Reeves. And one time I saw Buzz Osborne at the movies, and it made me want to kill myself. I was so happy. I saw Buzz Osborne in real life. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I, uh, he was at the movies and I went up to him and was sweating and shaking because uh, I've never, I don't ever go up to people, but I was such a huge Melvin's fan and I was like, uh, are you, are, are you boss? And then I don't remember what I said after that. My knees buckled. It was horrible. <laughs> he pushed you away. <laughs> he did. He did in fact push me away. Uh, he was very nice actually. But anyway, if you're ever in LA, we would love to hang out with you. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for being with us on the Indoor Kids. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Have a good day. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks so much, guys. Now leaving Nerdist.com.